wanna dance. Hi, hi, y'all. Get you back up off the wall. <laughs> now that is classic. leaving the house it's exciting and I'm not even sure what, what I'm doing but I'm being picked up in a minute and it's exciting and anyway hey hey what you say am I on yes okay so back to the hey it's Q&A and we have a, a Susan Elizabeth Turner whose husband is the man along with Christopher that that are the IT masters that saved the whole Tanny Raw enterprise so let's see what she had to say she was saying it, she cannot tolerate um, the nightshade family so she was just saying to me as I was transitioning to raw um, you know avoiding nightshades how long did I have to do that and how did I do that basically how long had I been sick which I have been sick for many years and it just snowballed into where I could no longer avoid doing something about it right so um, what I would suggest when you cannot tolerate the nightshade family a lot of times it's just because your body's frankly haywire do you know what I mean so I would clearly eliminate the nightshade family and you can do that by just just substitute something else but what I would mainly do and what I did was go on a lot of low glycemic green juices to get my nutrients in then I filled up on the other things that were not clearly nightshades and then after I had done that eliminatory elimination diet for so long cleaning out the bowels okay doing enemas doing a series of colonics I know they're I know they're expensive but here's the thing they work okay they work in your healing process and it's going to be worth it okay because nothing else going to, is going to heal you besides stop putting in the things that are hurting you let your body heal and then slowly start reintroducing those things one at a time so like I would basically totally eliminate those things and then as I was feeling better I would introduce one of those per week okay this is not even a funny situation when you when you are pretty much allergic to your environment and allergic to your surroundings and everything you eat it becomes detrimental to your your living you can't live like that so I would just say bite the bullet and do it stop putting in the stuff that's hurting you allow your body to heal like it needs to and then slowly introduce those things bam okay so that was for you girl let's see um, then we have Heather hey girl of um, plant-based diet and she was saying on a raw vegan journey any times that I wanted things that was not on my plan and how to avoid wanting the things and cravings the thing is after a while you're going to realize that hello this is not working for me it is not worth it anymore to continue to put myself in hurting and harm do you know what I mean it just wasn't worth it to me anymore I was spending too much time and too much money as you are girl I've watched you for many years now and now is the time to get off the fence because you know where the most painful place to be is on top of the fence where the pokey things are sticking in your honey your bonky your tootsie roll your rear your caboose right so get on with the show you see what I'm saying another thing is Heather is that those the raw vegan soups and sauces and dressings have saved me over these years if it wasn't for that the reason I have developed not to plug my ebook but BAM plug in my ebooks because that's why I have those recipes that's why I have those dressings because hello there's not one thing in the store I can go and buy that's already concocted that is the winning combo for me except my own dang combo you know so making dance soups makes me feel like I'm having cooked foods it drops me down a notch do you know what I mean it keeps me from from flying high and being so like weirded out all the time you know so girl now's the times what I'm saying you know you should get in touch with me because now's the time 
Okay, so um, anyway, I want to show. Colleen Crawford said she has celiac disease, which I clearly had, and also another person that is affected by the nightshade family. Your body, when, when you have celiac and Crohn's and all these things, your body feels like everything is a dang foreign invader. Do you know what I mean? Everything on the outside is an enemy to you, and it comes in, and you've probably got leaky gut too, and it, it filters into your body, and your body's like, oh my gosh, what is that? And it has an overactive immune response to that, you know? And it's not about beating down the immune response with immunosuppressant drugs that, hello, suppress your immune system, and then you're sick. I mean, this is like people that develop AIDS or different things like that, and then they have to take these drugs that suppress their immune system, and then they die from what? pneumonia they don't really die from AIDS do you see what I mean they they die from an immune response you understand because their body cannot fight that off anymore so this is not what we want what we want is to build up our body what we want is to build up adding in probiotics cleaning out your guts recolonizing with good bacteria eliminating the things that are not working and putting in everything you need and nothing you don't, right? What else was she saying? What foods, other foods triggered that? Every food triggered it. Nutritional yeast triggered it. Apple cider vinegar, things that you would, that I can eat now in moderation that I could not eat for a long time. I would think, why in the heck am I sick? And my mom would be like, why are you sick? Like, well, what did you eat? Like it was my fault. Your body backfires on you and it is not fair. It's not fair and now is the time to eliminate these things and get serious about your health, okay? So that's for you, Colleen. Um, then we have Mary Jones and she's talking about how does raw food improve your mental state and confidence and peace? It improves it on every level. It improves it because I can look at my life and think, oh my God, my husband really does suck or my life really does suck or I, I'm not doped down by I'm not doped down by the dope everybody else is living on. I'm not doped down by by food. You know what I mean? Toys, food slash food drugs. That's what they are. So when when you are able to not have all those toxins and stimulants and excitotoxins and all these things surging through your system and everything can come to a balance, you can feel. What feels different is every movement you make. What feels different is every breath you take. Here's an example. Every sexual encounter you have feels different. Maybe not for the other person, but for you, every one of these feels like something else. It's something different, like it was meant to be, you know? So that's for you, girl. Um, then we have can y'all see me? We have Maria Soul O Pulu, I think. Hey, girl. Anyway, Maria, she said, um, can a lifestyle develop, can this lifestyle make you develop candida? I don't think so. I think that you could already have an overgrowth of bad bacteria in your body, and when you start feeding it fruit, it could enhance that. But here's the thing, when you're having fruit and fat, that fruit is bouncing around in your system and it's not like like fruit sugar in and out, in and out. It's bouncing around. It's like somebody with diabetes can eat fruit if they're having a low fat diet and they clean out their system. So that all depends. Can we have some light? Let's have light. Bam! Okay. <laughs> and so anyway, um, Yes, a nutritional yeast and, um, okay, so nutritional yeast is not the same thing. If you, if you have a yeast problem, that's not going to exasperate that, okay? But some people cannot tolerate nutritional yeast that well. I, I do think it's a nice flavor enhancer, especially for people getting off cheese, but um, 
It can also be like an excitotoxin for the body. I find this for myself. That's why you don't see me using a lot of that in recipes because it can make me sore as if I'm having a, a overactive immune response, okay? So keep that in mind. And, and if I were you, if I were any of you trying to get off some things that cause you pain, I would get off all of those things. I would only eat fresh, whole, ripe, raw fruits and vegetables. That would be my bullseye. And if I couldn't do that, I would eat as close to it as I could. And if I had to eat cooked because I just couldn't stand it anymore, so be it, okay? You don't suck. You're still 95% raw. You're still 100% plant-based. Steam you up some sweet potatoes, okay? Put on some um, date and uh, maybe some sun-dried tomatoes, some tomato, basil, a little sauce. Mash that in the top, put that on top of some raw greens because the enzymes are gonna help you to, to uh, digest that and rock on, do you see what I mean? And love yourself for that because when you go around hating yourself every day because you're not hitting your 100% bullseye, that ain't healthy either, you see what I mean? But I would eliminate all these things I could, all the extras, and I would try to remember to eat whole plant food. And if I don't know what tree that grew off of I wouldn't gravitate towards that you know what I mean like um you see what I mean so um we talked about this earlier so Maria that was for you and oh and she was also like she's not improving she's got joint pain she's not improving on a raw till four and I hate to use that phrase but that's what she said and she doesn't seem to be detoxing well here's the thing okay a lot of people that I see eating raw till four or basically they're they're eating some fruit all day and they're waiting and they're cramming empty carb calories in the evening carb the fruit up okay how about nutrient up you know what i mean um okay eating out chinese every night is not going to get you to your highest level depends maybe you ate at mcdonald's every day that's a great step up peace to the brother and mother but it's not, you're not gonna have detox symptoms like that. Do you understand? Because your body's not going into detox. It's not trying to eliminate, okay? So you have to, if, if you're really wanting to do that, you need to get to a super clean level. So I wouldn't stress about not detoxing because you're not at that level. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, also with the joint problems, if you are really wanting to get over the joint problems, Quit putting in things that cause your body to create glue, like white rice, white pasta. I know people are out there probably shooting darts at their computer or phone right now that I'm saying that, but I'm just here to speak the truth from what I know it, and maybe it's not someone else's truth, but maybe you're really ready to heal. Do you see what I'm saying? So let's get on with the healing, Maria, shall we? Okay, one more thing. Do we have time? Yes, we do. Chris Park, hey friend, so they are saying, what does chia and water taste like? Black versus white chia seeds and can they add lemon? Here's the thing, if you add chia seeds to your water, you are gonna get a boost in energy. That has every amino acid your body needs to build protein, okay? It also has omega-3 fatty acids to keep you balanced, to keep you from running to food, okay? The, I have many videos on the benefits of chia seeds, and I will try to link that below. If you're lucky, I'll remember to do that. I will have to rewatch this video, you see, and I usually just take it and post it. So, um, they don't taste like anything. It creates like a little gel around the chia seed, and when you put it in there, then basically, it just tastes like nothing. It, it has a little bit of texture, and the black tastes no different than white. I like the white because if one gets caught in my teeth, you can't see it. And I do not enjoy any kind of little seeds in my teeth because it's just tacky. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but if you wanted to add lemon, yes. Fresh lemon is good to anything because it, it clearly alkalizes the body even though you would think it's acidic forming it is alkalizing to the body and it helps you absorb nutrients so there you go straight from the mouth of tanning raw from what i know everything i know and also everything i don't all at one time so see you later alligators <laughs> hey hey y'all get you back up off the wall <laughs> 
Now that is classic. <laughs> Listen, baby.